Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh guys. Oh my gosh guys. Tonight I am having my biggest fear food. Like my biggest fear food. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Before we get into why this is my biggest fear food, I'm going to show you what it is. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to give it a massive thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're new and join me on this journey. I can't believe this. <laughs> Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. How are you all doing? Okay guys, so my biggest fear food of all time, um, like one item is Raisin and cinnamon bagels. Just a disclaimer, if you don't have fear foods and you have an eating disorder, or if this isn't a fear food for you, that is completely okay and that is completely valid. This is just my personal biggest fear food. I'm just gonna try it because I feel like it's gonna be best when it's just been toasted. I've also put butter on it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I actually can't believe this. I will explain why this is my biggest fear food, but let's just try it first. Oh my gosh. I'm so emotional. This is literally, oh my God. That is so good. That is just how I remembered it. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, everybody. I'm just gonna keep going with it. Oh my gosh, look at that butter. Oh my gosh, guys. I, can't, I literally can't believe this. That is so good. I've also got some scrambled eggs with it and a little side salad, which has got edamame beans, which I'm so happy about. Love edamame. Let's try some scrambled egg. That is really good. Sorry guys, I was really hungry. Um, so sorry for just eating and tucking in, but oh my gosh. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. I just want to show me two years ago that. Oh my gosh. Right. I need to tell you guys the story of why this is my biggest fit food. So basically, I used to have bagels um like all the time before I got unwell, like all the time. Not just like cinnamon and raisin ones, but like all of them. Um, like I think they're called like the New York ones. I just loved it, like smoked salmon and cream cheese, all that sort of stuff. I used to have them for breakfast as well, like with a smoothie or something like that. Um, and my favourites were always the cinnamon and raisin, so the one I've just had. And when I became unwell, um, I just remember, like I just had this distinct memory of like, I think I was just, just discharged and I was like looking all around the supermarket and I would always see these bagels and wish I could have them, but like I never allowed myself to. And I just like craved them so bad. Like I used to remember <laughs> the taste in my mouth. It kind of just makes me emotional thinking about it, but I used to remember the taste in my mouth and like what they taste like and just wish I could have them. And I just never could. I'd always walk past that, like the display of bagels and just really wish that I could have them. Um, and then I think there was even one point where my mum, she knew how much I loved them. So she bought them for me um, and I just never had them. I think it was just, yeah, it was a really hard time um, and I didn't have them. And I have just been craving them ever since, but I've never allowed myself to have them. And 
until today. It's literally a bagel. I know it's a bagel, but eating disorders are irrational and yeah, it just feels like incredible actually to be sitting here and talking to you and eating this because this is huge for me, like absolutely huge. And the reasons why this is my biggest fear food is because if you'd asked me what's your like biggest fear food, always this would come to mind. And I don't know why, I, I really don't know why it would be this, but it was. Like this is my biggest fear food and I'm literally having it. Like, I can't believe this. I genuinely can't believe myself. Oh my gosh. I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to answer some of your questions because um, I did a little eat with me a few weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. So yeah, <laughs> I can't believe this. I smashed that. I absolutely smashed that. Wow, that was so good. Like it was just as good as I remembered it. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Completely finished. Go me. Yeah, let's answer some of your questions. Oh my gosh, like I'm actually smashing the fear foods recently. Like I had pizza last week, which I filmed for a video, which will be up already. So you can go and watch that. Um, I've been having like lattes from the Waitress coffee machine and just so many things like, like I went out for breakfast quite a few times. Like I always get the same thing, but that's okay. And yeah, I just, I'm just, yeah. I think what's really, really helped me as well is my coach. Like I have an eating disorder recovery coach and she sets me like challenges and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, it's really been helping me like keep accountable and actually do them. Um, and yeah, so many mindset shifts, which have just helped me to get to this point. And no, I'm not recovered like at all, but I've just had so many mindset shifts recently and like actually want recovery, um, which is just an incredible feeling. But yes, I answered my Instagram some questions for an eat with me. So let's see. I'm also gonna snack on my salad and my edamame beans. I love edamame. My favourite sorts of salads are like these sorts of leaves um, and I love carrot and edamame, it's just so good. I have a fork, I might as well just use my fork. Okay, I've had some salad and now I'm going to do some, answering some questions. Someone has just put granola, like just granola, which I know what you mean, you want me to do an eat with me when I'm eating granola. And you know what, I might actually be able to do that because it's so funny you should say that because my mum has just made some granola like for the first ever time she got this cookbook and she decided to make it um and it's literally just sitting over there so i might actually be able to do an eat with me um granola granola edition <laughs> um but yes stay tuned i might be doing that <laughs> um so first question are you able to wear a mask or is it still very hard do you have any tips I feel like this is a whole, whole nother video. So if you guys didn't know, I'm autistic. And do I find it hard to unmask? I really think it depends on the environment. Like some people, I can completely unmask and be myself. Um, or like when I'm alone, I can be myself. But in certain situations, still, I struggle to unmask because it is hard. And if you don't feel comfortable, you're gonna be least, you're gonna be less likely to want to unmask or to be able to unmask. Um, and there's certain environments that I know that I would just wouldn't be able to because I just don't feel comfortable in them. Um, but I think I'm very lucky now that a lot of like the things that I engage with and the things that I do, um, whether it be gymnastics and stuff like that, like I can unmask and I feel safe there and I, it feels like home. Um, so yeah, I think it's all about the environment. So it really, really depends environment to environment. Um, and also person to, like, person to person, like who you're with, um, plays a big part. So yes. Next one. What was the thing that made you want to recover? Oh, this is like such a deep question. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I was in Quasi for a long, long time. If you don't know what that is, it basically means that like 
it's not active recovery, it's not passive recovery, it's not going backwards, it's not it's going forwards in some senses and not in others. You know, it's not like fully committing. And like, I've never gone all in recovery, but since I kind of had this like, I don't wanna say relapse, but I guess kind of like, it was that um, in like the start of this year, like January time. Um, since then, like since kind of restarting recovery, um things have been like a lot different like there's a lot of different mindset shifts that have happened um for me to be able to sit down today and to have a cinnamon and raisin bagel um completely by myself like there is a lot of shifts and and there's so many different factors that have like come to play with that um but what was the thing that made me want to recover I would say like slowly over time, I had so many more things that I absolutely loved doing. Like I love gymnastics now and I only started that in January and I love gymnastics and you know, I do social media and I love that. And like, I love my job. I work for the NHS if you didn't know. Um, and all those sorts of things. Like I see friends and I want to go to the gym. I go to the gym as well. And like, I love that like so much. And like when I started having this like wobble or like going backwards, like I knew that all that was going to be taken away from me um, if I didn't change things around. Um, and like, I just wanted, I was so like miserable in my life. And, you know, I kept wanting like things that made me happy, like gymnastics and stuff, like that being taken away was like such a big fear of mine. And I think, yeah, I just wanted to like, I was like, I just want to keep going. I want to live my life and I want to have a future. And the only way that I'm going to reach my goals is, is if I recover. Like in two years time, five years time, 10 years time, I don't want to be held back by my eating disorder. Like for so long, I clung on to the sick identity and I wanted to be sick and I didn't want to recover for so long. Like if you feel like that, like I completely hear you because that was me for so long. But then it just got to a point where I was like, this isn't helping me reach my goals. And there is so much more to life than staying sick for the rest of my life. Um, and I think that came from like seeing little glimmers of hope pop up in my life. Like, you know, the things I've just listed, like all those things like wouldn't be possible without. I'm so sorry about that, guys. I ran out of storage, which is a common occurrence. I won't lie. The reality of being a content creator is you literally run out of storage all the time. Um, but I'm back. I've deleted a few things. Hopefully I didn't need them. Um, but yes, I can't even remember what I was saying. I'm going to move on to the next question. How do you deal with imposter syndrome while waiting for an autism assessment? Oh my gosh. So waiting for an autism assessment is literally a period of your life where you will question everything and everything is uncertain because your whole life, your whole, like what you've thought about yourself is like suspended in the air because you don't know if you're autistic or not. You don't know this missing piece of your life. You didn't even know it existed a couple of months or years ago. And now you've got this missing piece, but you don't know if it is like your missing piece. Like you don't know if that's like you are autistic. So yeah, it is so difficult. Um, and I think you will question it until you get that formal diagnosis. Um, but obviously self-diagnosis is valid, but like, I do think getting a formal diagnosis really helped me just cement it for me. But still after I'm like, you know, I still question things and I think that's okay. And that's like, you know, that's, that's kind of part of the journey, but yeah, it is really difficult, hard few months leading up to it. Um, so yeah, I feel you on that one. How to prepare for an autism assessment um definitely your family history so like talk to like people in your family and stuff about your childhood um but i think just be kind to yourself like be curious and do your research but also just be yourself like go into the assessment and just be yourself like it doesn't matter what you've read or whatever just be yourself and then you know that like the outcome is like it is true to you like if you go in there and then you're like not like you're behaving in a certain way then the outcome you might you might question that whereas like just be yourself and the outcome will be what it will be and i think that would have really helped me if someone told me that um but yeah i think just be yourself that is the key thing how are you finding um online school 
I love it. It's great. I'm currently on Easter holidays, um, but I've got exams literally until the end of term, which is always fun. The whole of the summer term is literally exams because I do ASs and then I've also got um, like UCAS exams and all that fun stuff. So yes, um, but I just love the flexibility. I love that like I don't have to socialise and I can socialise in other places like gymnastics and places that I want to socialise. Um, and yeah, I would highly recommend it for anyone. Obviously, like I would say you need to do things around it because it can be really isolating. Um, but yeah, it's great. Like if you struggled at school, I would definitely give it a try because it is a lot more accommodating. Next question, how is OCD and self-harm recovery going? Um, I think in terms of like OCD and stuff, like it's a journey. It is definitely a journey. And I think for me, like, it, I get the thoughts all the time. Like I get the intrusive thoughts all the time. I just can now frame it in my mind like that is irrational and I know it's irrational. And don't get me wrong, it brings me so much anxiety and, and so much like panic and like discomfort. But I can now, you know, look at it a different way. And I think it just comes from like experience when things happen in life. Like I know that it wasn't because of something happening um like things happen because things happen and a lot of things in life you can't control but i think the biggest thing for me was like the mindset shift like the way i viewed the intrusive thoughts and also the way like my whole holistic outlook on life and like what's important and stuff like that and like i know that's kind of a weird thing to say in terms of ocd but like it's kind of like the things that I'm so scared about happening because like how important those things are to me. And that's why I'm like, you know, when you actually like do the mental processes and think it through and why you're actually really anxious about a certain thing, like I think it just helps put it into perspective. And there are so many good resources on this um, website called getselfhelp.com. I'll link it below, but that is a really good website for OCD um, and for like all mental health conditions, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to end this one here, guys. I can't believe I did it. I genuinely can't believe I did it. I am going to finish my edamame beans. And yeah, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I genuinely can't believe it. And some people are going to be like, why are you literally in disbelief over a bagel? Because it is my biggest fear food and I've done it. Like, oh my days. I can't believe it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. I hope it inspired you to maybe try one of your fear foods or one of your biggest fear foods because that's what I did today. Um, so stick this video on, replay it and get yourself your biggest fear food or just a fear food and let me know what it was. Um, and yeah, sending so much love and I'll see you guys very soon for a brand new video. Bye guys.